Well, Moses, it all comes down to this. Game 7 of the Northern Alberta Junior B quarterfinals. And the Lloydminster Banners were looking to avoid blowing a 3-1 series lead heading to St. Paul. They were outscored 14-5 by those Canadians, by the way. That is not good, and that was in the two games alone in 5-6. and six. So things didn't start well either for this team in Game 7, down 2-0. But the Bandits come right back to score four unanswered for the 4-2 final, winning the series four games to three. There's a lot of fours in there. Ryan Rancier, Brody Pollard, Jesse Stanfield, and Anthony Rennie all answered the bell for the Bandits. Next up are the Wainwright Bisons, Game 1, set for tomorrow night at 8.30. Now, after earning a bye in the first week of the Midget AAA playoffs, the Baker Hughes Bobcats are gearing up for a strong postseason run. The Baby Cats play game one Thursday, but as Nerman Issa reports, they'll be without some key pieces in the lineup. A second place finish in the regular season has earned the Baker Hughes Bobcats a much needed rest. With a bye in the first round, it allowed the players a chance to heal up and clear their minds. Yeah, it was nice getting a week off, go home and see the family and not on the ice for a bit and come back ready to work. We had a few banged up guys and nagging injuries so they were able to heal up and get ready and be 100% for uh, the first round of playoffs. The Cats made it to the league final last year but lost to the Red Deer Chiefs three games to one. While redemption will be on the minds of some Cats, majority of those players are no longer on the team. And speaking of the roster... Now the Baker Hughes Bobcats will be without three main pieces when they start off their series. Zane Franklin, Jansen Leslie and Kobe Moore will not be playing for them for the first two games. Now they have been invited to play for Team Alberta at the Canada Winter Games. You know, those are big uh, key pieces of the puzzle, but uh, we got the right guys here that'll, you know, step up and you can put guys in different situations that they probably wouldn't have been able to get in without with these guys here. So everyone just um, really bears down and does their own part. We should be fine. We've got some solid APs that have been played for the rest when they've been called up, so I think we'll be okay. The big goal for the team right now is to get their legs moving and their minds refocused on the game. After all, getting time off has its pros and cons. The downside of it, you know, you kind of get a little rusty and, you know, time off away from the rink, not being focused, thinking of hockey. But, you know, we did some team building stuff on the weekend and we got two practices before our big game on Thursday. So the boys should be ready and uh, no excuses kind of thing. Um, just to take it one game at a time and not get so caught up in how all the other teams are doing, just to worry about ourselves. And like I said, play it one game at a time and everything will work out for us. Nara Manisa, Newcap Sports. Now puck drop between the Bandits, or Bobcats that is, and SSAC is at 6.15 tomorrow night at the Civic. They split the regular season at one apiece. Move on to basketball. The word perfection didn't always resonate with the Lashburn senior boys basketball team unless you were talking about the loss column. You see, after several winless seasons, the Lobos have turned a new page, becoming one of the most dominant teams in Saskatchewan 2A basketball. Aaron Bordado has more in this report. And when he goes to the bucket, Fill in. After countless losing seasons under head coach Scott Mitchell, the Lobos senior boys basketball team started this season off differently, 19-0 to start the year, which is a testament to the growth of the coach and the team from just a few seasons ago. There was four or five grade nines and then a couple of grade twelves, that's all we had. We had six or seven guys and uh, we lost big every game by a lot. I think we lost in Thunderchild by over 100. Yeah, it wasn't good, but we didn't have any experience at the time. Good push, push, push. It's been a complete culture change this season. With grade 12's Cole Cleghorn and Brendan Sauer leading the charge, the team hasn't dropped a game yet, something the two attribute to the team's ability to move the ball and work together. I think it was the chemistry. We actually have a lot of good people on the team, and they work good together. When I first came here back in uh, last year, we kind of we struggled to move the ball and struggled to play as a team, I think. And then this year, things have been clicking and we've been passing the ball a lot better and, and using each other instead of just individual play. Brendan Sauer joined the team after a mid-season transfer from the Holy Rosary Raiders last season. Being one of the oldest players on the team now, He's provided the bench with some much needed leadership. Just a great player, great team guy, like awesome in the, in the locker room and uh, a real leader. And so 
He started last year playing a little bit. He didn't get a ton of minutes just because he was new and we were trying to work him into the system and everything. And then this year he's been a real leader for us. With first place in the standings and an untarnished record almost 20 games into the year, the guys know they're capable of something special. It's starting with conferences and then regionals, we just need to take it one tournament at a time, one win at a time, and hopefully maybe even end the season undefeated, which would be nice. Aaron Bordado, Newcap Sports. And that is your first look at sports. Gerard Lampau has your weather details coming up.